Radical. GameStop is actually now launching GameStop Retro, which is actually going to be not brand new stores, if what I'm reading is correct here, but I might be wrong. Not brand new stores propping up, but existing stores will have portions of that store fitted to carrying retro games. All right, so I was thinking that GameStop would actually have to do something drastic to change things up, because if you go in there now, you'll see half the place is fucking Funko Pops. And also, they might see the writing on the wall when it comes to physical games, how everything you hear about physical is that people are, you know, sadly moving over to digital versus physical on the game front. It's not 2010, it's not 2011. You know, your brand new game release is not eagerly anticipated on disc form. Now, people get the early download of it. Or, you know, you buy it earlier. Honestly, I can't fucking tell you. Because you know what? I am all physical. I rarely download anything and get the uh, non-physical version myself. But a lot of you probably are all, all into not owning actually what you buy. But Rick, you don't own anything you buy. I uh, know there's a whole argument there because you just get the download and you have to um, you have to put the game in your system. Then you have to click and download a portion of it. I get it, I get it. But still, to me, there's nothing quite like owning a physical copy of a game. But GameStop sees the writing on the wall that 5, 10, 15 years from now, sadly, I don't think you'll even be able to buy a physical disc in the stores. So, what do you do if you're a GameStop? Well, obviously, since everything's going to be retro anyway, since copies, physical copies of Call of Duty are going to be eventually retro, then make it a thing. Now, there's a lot of questions that many of us will have with GameStop now retrofitting a lot of their current stores, making them GameStop retros. The biggest concern I have, and many people have, is probably the pricing. <laughs> you know, is GameStop going to be charging four or $500 for a complete inbox Sega Saturn? Will they be checking on values online? Will, will the management at GameStop have to check out videos from Metal Jesus to see actually how much the stuff is worth? Because it's just out there. Like, who sets the prices on retro games? Not the aforementioned person. I don't think the person I mentioned does. But really, honestly, who sets the actual legitimate pricing for retro games? A new game, once, you know, FIFA kind of had been out for a couple months, it might drop down to 49 or 39 bucks. There's new games. But what about these older games? If GameStop gets their hands on a Castlevania Bloodlines, then what are they going to do? If they get their hands on an Earthbound inbox, will you be paying $2,000 at a GameStop for this game? I don't think that's feasible. I think GameStop maybe knows that that's not feasible, so we actually be getting a <gasps> deal on retro games at a GameStop. Was it due for a lot of people? Not specifically myself. I sell mostly like retro game stuff. Not super retro game stuff, but like 360 PS2. What does it do for people like me? I don't think I'm going to be affected that greatly because I don't charge a whole lot for my old games. But if you got a mom and pop shop or a retro game store, they're going to be a little bit worried. Actually, quite a lot worried because they're going to be curious about the prices. And to somebody right now that's got the option of bringing in their retro games to turn into a store like a mom and pop shop, is it more appealing? Will they get more money or bigger offers from a GameStop that knows what they're going to be selling their games for? This is actually a big shift in GameStop. GameStop, and I, I have one more question. There might be many questions in the future to this, but... Who are they going to hire on their staff at GameStop that's actually going to know a fake copy of Omar, a fake copy of Yoshi's World from Super NES or Killer Instinct from a real copy? What about these super ultra rare games? Huh? What about like a, 
a little Samson. If they get a little Samson comes in and the labels brand spanking, brand brand spanking, brand spanking, <laughs> brand spanking. If it's brand spanking new looking, is somebody going to call that out when a person brings up and say, hey, hey, you made that cart. There's no way that looks that new. Let me check the screws. Let me check this. Can I open it up? You know, we have a situation to where it's the market's going to be flooded and all these people are actually going to be rubbing their hands together that are making these fraudulent copies of these games, now turning them into GameStop. And because, hey, they can legit, they got a place where they can go to where they're going to get a certain amount for these games. Will there be a listing on their website of how much money they're going to offer for certain particular games? I mean, honestly, GameStop might wind up making a absolute ton of money here because there's a ton of money to be made to be made in the retro market and cashing in on these fools and speculators that think these old games are worth several thousands of dollars that aren't really even that rare. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs>